that he sustains the truth for all of us, for all his followers, and for all his disciples. John chapter 13, are we going to start in verse 4? So I want to ask to um, sit together, you're going to start with verse 4. John 13, verse 4. He rises from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. Verse 5, brother John. After that he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter saith unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Verse 7, uh, Jesus answered and said to him, What am I doing? You do not understand now, but you will know after this. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no part with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet, but also my hands and my head. Savior and the Redeemer of us. 
he will call the servant of humanity. Isn't that amazing, that? Sometimes, when the Lord calls us to do things to be servant, we don't like that. Why I become a servant? Sometimes people complain. But here, in this ceremony, is reminding to everybody, I am the Lord. But I'm not only the Lord, I become your servant because I love you. And this is said, I am the Lord, I'm your servant. You need to be the servant of your brothers and sisters too. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. This is very clear. In Matthew, in Matthew chapter 20 and verse 28, I'm not come to what? To be served by what? To serve others. But Jesus became a servant of others with the spirit of what? With the spirit of love. Whatever Jesus did, he did with love. Now with bad attitude. Now we're complaining or moaning. Oh, I don't like this. This is too bad, Lord. No. Whatever this father called him to do it, he did with the spirit of love. So the people tell the sense that Jesus was a servant, but whatever he did, he did with the spirit of love to others. Jesus is calling us to be a servant in his kingdom too. And Jesus is fed that we become a servant for others, but we want that we be what? Good servant, happy servant, who always have a good attitude to others, and that we serve others with what? We love. I will give you just an example. Sister Kathy, yes. did you like the people? <laughs> serve you? With a bad attitude? No. Really? <laughs> she doesn't like. What about you, Lois? If you ask somebody to make a favor to you, do you want that that person make a favor with a good attitude or bad attitude? Only a good attitude. Good attitude! People expect that whatever favor that we do to them, we need to do it with what? With a good attitude. We love. This is how Jesus was. He was a servant who whatever his father called to do, he did with love, with happiness, with joy, with a good attitude. So the full watching ceremony is reminding, remind, remind to us the importance to be servants like Jesus Christ and have the same attitude that Jesus had. Be good servants that we have the spirit of love, that we serve one another in the spirit of love. Mm -hmm. With a good attitude always. Whatever somebody can ask to do, how I can help you. I'm here, how I can help you. And whatever the Lord can ask to do for others or in the church, we need to do with the spirit of love to others. No. That's the beautiful part about this. The beautiful part about this is everybody we need a higher cleansing in our life. When this is going to wash the feet of Peter, what Peter said, no, no. I don't want that you wash, wash my feet. But what's the answer of this is? If you don't let me to wash your feet, you don't have power with me. In other words, if you not let me to cleanse your heart, your life, for this simple heart and feelings, you don't have power with me, my people. We need to be humble and recognize, Lord, I have some problems in my life. I have some wrong attitude or horrible attitude that I want that you take away from my life. I need to be more like you. Honey, Lord, cleanse me from that attitude, sin 
for feeling, gym for talk, that I can be clean like you are. That's why I love what they said, Lord, clean me and wash me and give me what? A clean heart. Don't tell you what you call it, spirit. Many more like you. Number three. We need to have a fellowship not only with Christ, but we need to have a fellowship with all our brothers and sisters. Jesus cleans our life and purifies our life that we can enjoy what? The communion is on it. After this grass, the feet of the disciple, what happens to all the disciples? Harmony. Love. Connecting, they are talking each other. That's exactly what happened. When we participate in the food watching ceremony, Lord, cleanse me anything that divides between my brothers and sisters. Cleanse any spirit of pride, any spirit of selfish, and please help me to love my brothers and sisters, that we can have a good relationship, that we can love each other, that we can accept each other. That we can understand each other, comprehend each other, be patient with each other. It's necessarily important. Jesus brings unity and harmony among all his followers and disciples. Isn't that beautiful, man? After Jesus finished this ceremony, all the disciples, they were in the same place, with the same spirit. With the same attitude. They have harmony and unity among them. This is cleanse, cleanse their life, and they were not cleansed by the power of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. And now they can love and accept this other. That's why Jesus said in John 13. And verse 34 and 35. Look, 34 and 35. A real commandment I gave to you that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Verse 35. By this, all we know that you are my disciple if you have loved one another. This is the purpose of this ceremony. Leading us to what? To love one another. Amen. Only one amen. Amen. Yeah. You don't want to love one another? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Only one brother say, I'm not pastor. I want that. The what? Oh, pastor. <laughs> Hello, people. Let's read the Bible together. Let's read the Bible verse together. Verse 34 and 33. One, two, three. Hello? John 13, 34, and 35. One, two, three. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. Amen. 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 This is the only way that the people we know that we are the disciples of Jesus. You can have the most wonderful and amazing truth, but if you're not living that, it means nothing. You can't profess the truth. And you can have a knowledge of the truth. But if you don't have love for your brothers and your sisters, it means nothing. This is what's very clear. The only way that the people we know that you are my disciple is if you love one another. If you not love one another, how the people we know that you are my disciple? They're never going to understand that. Because when I can, I love people. And I teach my disciples to love each other and to love others to even the enemies. 
And the only way that this happening is by a loud cry, please me, from all this experience that led me to divide and hate my brothers and sisters. In terms of hate or putting away, give me your spirit of love that I can love them like you love me. Because this is command us to love my brothers and sisters in the way you love you and me. Can you imagine that? How much this is love you? How patient is Jesus with you? How merciful is Jesus with you? How compassionate Jesus is with you? Can you be with others like Jesus is with you? Loving, merciful, patient, kind. Did you accept others like Jesus accepted you? Even if we have a horrible character? Or you believe we have a beautiful character? How many here have a beautiful character? Hello? What happened? Nobody was to hang. What happened? Even without horrible character, Jesus loved you. And Jesus is patient and come with you. And Jesus said, please love others in the way I love you. Even if you have a horrible character, I love you. So if somebody has a horrible character, you need to love them too. And we pray to them, and we can, and we merciful, and the people they're going to discover, oh, this is different. Maybe this person is a disciple and a follower of Jesus Christ. It's different. Look how I am. Look how horrible I am. And this person is patient, is kind, is loving, is merciful. The story changed now. The environment changed now. Because you decide to reflect the character to others and let them know that you really are an authentic Christian and follower and disciple of Jesus Christ. It's not only enough to say, I'm a Christian. You need to prove by your actions and word that you are a Christian and you love them too. Amen. Like Jesus loved them. Amen. So let's move to the next part. That's enough. Ceremony of the Lord's Supper. What is the meaning of that? When Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper in Exodus, well, let me come back to this. When Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper, the Jewish nation they celebrated what? The Passover. And Jesus was celebrating that Passover with his disciples. And before Jesus died, he decided to what? Celebrate for the last time the Passover, and he instituted in the Passover, the Lord's Supper. Because the Passover has a very important meaning, and a very great meaning for the Jewish nation. What was the meaning of that? Why they celebrate the Passover? Anybody know why they celebrate the Passover? And today they celebrate the Passover. What is the meaning of that? Hello? No. Exodus Egypt. Okay? When they left Egypt? The freedom they had. The, they were freed from slavery. Oh, the angel. Freedom from what? From the, angel. the slavery of what? Of the Egyptian. What is the meaning of that? The Lord manifests his mighty power to deliver his people from the slavery of the Egyptians, and now they have freedom because God has delivered them from the slavery. What is the meaning now of the Lord's Supper? The liberation and the freedom of the power of us, of sins and Satan. That's the good news about it. Are you happy to know that? Yeah. Are you happy to know that? Are you happy to know that you have a mighty Savior? Amen. Are you happy to know that your Savior and your Redeemer is God? And a mighty God who nothing is impossible for him, and he made possible that we and me will come be saved today? Amen. Amen. Hello, amen. 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 You not believe that sometimes. We need to believe. Follow me to the Gospel of John. Chapter 6, 6, 
and verse we're going to start in verse 32 and 35. Jesus is speaking about this. He tried to illustrate the meaning and the significance of what? The bread and the wine of the great Jews. Okay? John 10, 32 to 25. Family, can you read 32 please to 25? He will never 
He will live forever, and the bread that I can give is my flesh, which I can give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore quarrel among themselves, saying, Who? How? How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then he should talk to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, to let you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will rise him up at the last day. So what we need? Do you believe Jesus is speaking literally here? Or is symbolic? It's symbolic. Why are you actually speaking? If you want to enjoy the life and be satisfied, you need something. Ah, you need meat. You need to eat my flesh and drink my, my, my blood, but in a symbolic way, not literal way. How do we know that? Because in verse 53 is the answer for that. Verse 53, the Bible says, it is the spirit to give life. The flesh probably knowing the word that I expect to do our spirit and they are what? Life. life. That's why this is just in Matthew 20, Matthew 4, 4. Men shall not live by what? Bread alone. By, by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So what we need? We need day by day the word of God in our lives. Amen. We need to let Jesus try bless our life through what? We meditate and accept His word. The only way that you're going to enjoy the satisfaction is by allowing the word of God to satisfy your life and you live in the principles of God in His word. Nice. 
Christ in Jesus, I believe in your sacrifice, and I believe that I depend entirely in you. No other ways to be saved, and no other ways to have eternal life and have a satisfaction in our life, only through Jesus Christ and His Word. I don't know how do you feel today. But Jesus said that he gave time to his father for the bread and the wine. And the meaning of this is that we'll be transferred to the Lord for his plan of salvation for our life. Now we say, thank you, Lord, that you provide a way that I can be happy, that you provide a way that I can be free from the slavery of sin. That you provide a way that I can enjoy the satisfaction in my life. That you provide a way that I can have an eternal life and access to heaven. Thank you, my Lord, that through the plan of salvation of Jesus Christ, I can enjoy all the blessings for my physical, mentally, and spiritual life. Thank you for your provision. And thank you. Because now, I am your child, and you are my God. You are my Father. You are my Lord. You are my Savior. And thank you, because now I belong to the Heavenly Family. Isn't that beautiful, huh? Yes. You belong to the Heavenly Family now. Your brothers and sisters here, they are in this journey with you to heaven. And one day, you will have the opportunity not only to participate of the communion service again, but you will have the privilege to be part of the communion service that Jesus is going to be what? Living out for all his people in heaven. That's the promise. You believe that his Savior and Lord is coming from him. And one day, all of us, we will have the privilege to live forever in Jesus' presence and enjoy forever the eternal life that Jesus is giving us today. What a privilege Amen. we have. How many blessings the Lord is giving to us. And this is the meaning of this. The bread represents the perfect life of Jesus Christ. The great youth and fermenting represents the perfect life of Jesus Christ. This is never committing a sin. This is living a perfect life and he sacrificed his life for you and for me. So how many today want to ask to the Lord, Lord, today, I want to open my heart to you. Today, I want that you cleanse me. Today, I want to participate of your breath and your great juice. And I want that you give the satisfaction that I need in my life. I want, my Lord, that you give the meaning that I need in my life. Bless me today. Break the power of the enemy. Please deliver me from whatever addiction or wrong habit that I have in my life. I want to be free from the power of the enemy and enjoy the liberty I have in you to try that I live in day by day and walk day by day in the spirit and not in the flesh anymore. Hey, Lord, give me the power of the Holy Spirit to live in, in harmony with you will and have an authentic Christian life day by day. That I can reflect your love to others and the people they know that I am your disciple and we follow it by action. Amen. How many of you want to say that to the Lord? I invite you to stand up and let's uh, fill it with the last name. It's not this, it's three or one. Did I forget to add the rest? Three or one. Three or one. Three or one, sister. Can you play that name for all of us? I want to ask to Sister Lord to come forward, please.
by your head, and after that, we're going to divide it. Precious and wonderful Father, thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to meditate in this new ceremony. Give us the joy and the happiness, O Lord, to be clean, to be purified, that you wash our heart, mind, and soul by the power of the Holy Spirit and by the blood of Jesus Christ. Purify us, my Lord. May us holy, may us pure like you are. Give us the joy, O oh my Lord, to receive every blessing that you have for us in this day. Thank you for this privilege to be part of the communion service. Give us the spirit that we need and give us the opportunity, my Lord, to fear the power of your presence and the power of the Holy Spirit working in our heart. We open our heart to you, Holy Spirit. We open our heart to you, dear Jesus and Father. Continue working in our lives. That the world will be coming us. You finish, my Lord. Amen. We want to be in heaven. We want to be ready for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Help us to be ready. And help us, my Lord, to love you like you love us. And love our brothers and sisters in the same way you love us. Please, may that transformation happen and possible in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.